next speaker is uh, Leon Golden, uh, Gondelman, sorry. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, please go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Leon, and I'm going to present uh, a work that we recently did with uh, Jonas, Mario, Amin, and Lars on verifying reliable network components in distributed separation logic using dependent separation protocols. It's a very long title, so let's investigate together what's behind it. So this work is, in one word, is about tying two loose ends. On one end, we have session type based reasoning about reliable communication. And on the other uh, hand, we are tying reasoning uh, and program logics about distributed programs running over an unreliable network. And our work makes the following contribution in a nutshell. Uh, we come up with a you know, reliable dependent transfer of resources pattern that allows to reason about a reliable dependent transfer of resources over an unreliable network. And our work also provides a first foundational verification of a reliable client-server communication library, and uh, on top of which we build also a verification of remote procedure call and a key value store with a lazy re replication. Um, so let's uh, motivate this work with the following example, in which we see two processes, process one and process two, on left and right, that uh, communicate through a channel uh, with two chan and, uh, channel endpoints, C and C prime. The uh, first process uh, sends two uh, words, CARP and DM, over a channel, and then uh, waits to receive uh, two messages back and asserts that the length of the, so what it should receive is the length of the messages back. And then it asserts that the first message should be of, of length five and the second message should be of, of uh, length four. And the other process is kind of like a server. It just receives a message and then sends back the length of the request of the string. And, and uh, so um, uh, obvious observ observation with, which we can make is that um, the assertion about messages, a message's length holds only if the communication is reliable, meaning that the messages are uh, received uh, in order and without duplicates. And then the question is, well, how do we can how can we prove that formally? How do how can we capture this uh, formally? Uh, one possible solution for that would be to uh, come up with a program logic that provides a formalism to specify the communication between processes in a given program program, like I showed just before, and that uh, comes with a proof rules to specify the behavior of communication primitives, along with the fact that it should also enforce the implementation of communication primitives, primitives is indeed reliable. And um, here we see that we have some design choices for such a program logic. Well, it depends on what is a formalism to describe reliable communication and what are communicating processes themselves. Are they threads uh, or are they network nodes? And then also how the communication is actually implemented. So, um, uh, one possible uh, implementation, one possible setting would be a message passing concurrency, where processes are thread running in parallel. So here, uh, what we see is that we can create those uh, channel endpoints uh, synchronously, uh, and then uh, just uh, spawn two threads, process one and process two, which do the job we described before. And uh, it happens that for the processes running in parallel on the same machine, for the message passing concurrency, uh, such a program logic has been recently developed, uh, and it is Actress Framework developed by Jonas and, um, and uh, others. And um, Actress Framework, it specifies the communication protocols by means of so-called dependent separation protocols, and it provides abstract logical model of reliable communication via so-called Actress Go theory. And finally, it uses this separation logic of uh, Iris Framework to build a dedicated program logic to reason about message passing concurrency. Uh, let's see in, just in details what all this means because we are going to use this through this talk. So dependent separation protocols is um, an expressive variant of session types. One can see it like that. So which means that, um, I hope you can see my mouse moving, uh, I guess so. Um, so dependent separation protocols 
is uh, they described by the following grammar. One can send a message or uh, receive a message and advance into protocol or terminate the protocol. And when one sends um, a message, uh, unlike just in like in session types, when it's characterized just by the type, one can send uh, for the value uh, of the type. It can uh, one can transfer a resource uh, uh, associated with this value, and uh, this resource can depend on some binders. Uh, so uh, hence the word dependent. Um, and uh, those uh, those uh, separation protocols, they just like uh, standard session types, they come with notions of duality and sub protocol relation. And for duality, it means basically that uh, what one process sends is viewed by the other process as uh, something received, and vice versa. And the sub protocol relation essentially allows to swap between uh, sent and received messages if uh, what we uh, receive and send are uh, independent. Um, and this is useful to, for instance, specify and verify the example that uh, our motivating example, whereas the protocol for our echo server would be, from the point of view of the server, it would be a recursive protocol where the process two receives uh, a string and then it sends back the uh, length of the string. And then the protocol for the process one would be the dual bit when it sends a string and it should receive uh, the length of the string. And the swapping is quite important here because one uh, subtlety is uh, that the um, process one, it uh, sends two messages ahead of receiving them. So it doesn't send and receive, send and receive. So it wants to perform two sends first and then make two receives. And well, thanks to sub protocol relation, uh, it is possible because the protocol for the process one is a subtype of the precise protocol we need. And then, of course, we need a program proof rules for send and receive to make this reasoning uh, factual. And this uh, exactly where Actress provides a program logic for message passing concurrency by defining a channel endpoint pointer, a ch channel endpoint ownership, uh, which associates the physical channel C with the protocol. And then uh, provides the proof rules for creating a synchron a channel synchronously, a channel uh, both channel endpoints, and then provides the specification for send and receive. Uh, if we see very quickly, this uh, the rule for uh, for send, for instance, uh, one has to have an ownership for the channel endpoint such that one can uh, know that the protocol is in the state where one can send a message and give up resources associated with this message, and then get back updated ownership for the uh, channel endpoint. All right. So this is what has been done recently for message passing concurrency. But what if processes that we are considering are running actually on separate machines and communicate with each other over network? So basically, what if our little example with the send and receive and, and the server loop, they are a part of a bigger program which is a distributed program with a client and a server that falls down in a classical paradigm when we create a, a client socket and we connect the client to the server after which we do all this stuff. And then uh, on, the, on the server side, we also create a server socket and then the server listens to accept new connections. And once the server accepts connection, it can serve each client uh, as we described previously. And the problem here, we can observe that, well, the network communication is fundamental and reliable, unlike the message passing occurrence, because messages can be lost, can be reordered or duplicated. And uh, so one needs, of course, uh, to use a reliable transport layer such as TCP, SCTP, or a custom reliable transport layer uh, to make this communication reliable. And the research question we ask in this work is, OK, can we apply actually the the actress framework, uh, namely dependent separation protocols and the actress code theory to verify uh, such an implementation of reliable network communication layer so that we, in the end, are able to enable high level reasoning about distributed applications, uh, which we will we would be build on top of such layer. Uh, and our approach is the following. So we implemented in this work a reliable communication library for client server communication in OCaml. 
We then translate this implementation into an error slang using a, a simple compiler. And the error slang is itself uh, an OCaml like language, but it comes with a well defined formal semantics and uh, a machinery to reason about a program's reason, um, written in this language. This machinery is called an ARIS program logic. And then we're going to use this program logic of an ARIS and the actress framework to verify this implementation. And once that's done, we are able to build um, distributed applications and libraries on top of RCLIP, such as remote procedure call. So let's see uh, those steps in little detail. Um, what is our library? So our library um, is very much alike, uh, like realistic libraries like TCP or SCTP. In the, in, in the sense that it features BSD sockets like primitives, like connect and listen and accept and send and receive. Uh, it also uses uh, a, a SCTP for handshake connection uh, establishment. And uh, it uh, um, provides the channel descriptors um, on which uh, send and receive operate um which under the hood use uh, buffered bidirectional uh channels and uh, the reliability is enforced uh, through classical mechanisms such as sequence id acknowledgements or other retransmission mechanism and it's approximately uh, 300 300 400 lines of OCaml code so uh, here is uh, just a uh, how our OCaml api looks like and uh Indeed, it looks pretty much standard apart from uh, uh, two differences. We make an explicit distinction between client and server sockets um, and channel descriptors. And the second is that what we're going to send over the net, or what we're going to send is not um, strings, but uh, values so that it's a bit more high level. And in order to do so, we are um, parameterizing our uh, a, uh, API with a serializer. So when the client starts to wants to connect, it needs first to explain how the uh, values that will be sent to the server will be serialized, and similarly, how the values that the server sends to the client will be serialized. All right. And so uh, once we implement this library, we then translate it into an Irish slang, which uh, is a formal language with uh, um, well-defined operational semantics that features um, node local concurrency and um, UDP socket primitives. So it's uh, uh, about a UDP uh, network. And it comes also with an ARIS program logic that allows to, uh, that provides proof rules to reason precisely about this node local concurrency and to reason about uh, communication and reliable communication over UDP network. And it is built on top of Iris framework, uh, so in Coq, and um, benefits from all features of Iris framework. Um, sorry. Um, so how do we verify? What, what is the um, crux of the verification of RCLIP? Well, the key component of the verification is uh, what we call a session escrow pattern that links together the unreliable spatial, spatial resource transfer uh, in an Iris and the reliable dependent resource transfer of actress. And once this link is established, we can define uh, an ownership uh, for channel endpoint, and we can verify send and receive implementation with respect to the, uh, the following specs, um, which look almost like the specs for that we have seen for message passing concurrency. The only difference being that the channel ownership, uh, channel and ownership is parameterized by the serializer and the IP address. But essentially, those specs look really, really almost the same as uh, Actress provides for message passing concurrency. And so let's see in details, uh, so what's the challenge is to, to provide this link and why do we need escrow, session escrow pattern? Well, to understand that, let's first see how resource transfer is realized in an ARIS. So in an ARIS, uh, where one reasons about unreliable communication, um, <clears throat> um, 
when one uh, wants to transfer resource uh, resources over the network, one sends a, a message from uh, from socket handler S1, um, and in that moment, one uh, has to provide a resource phi m m1. Let's say we send a message m1, where phi is a function from messages to the propositions. So the, our resource is indexed by messages that we we send. And then, well, this resource doesn't go through through the network. This resource is put into so let's say it, a logical box from which the uh, receiver can get acquire this this resource uh, once it receives the message. Now the the um, the question is how does it receive? Because the problem is that the messages can be lost or they can be duplicated. So the um, receiver should receive the message only once, and uh, and uh, we achieve this by by um, sending over the network not the resource because this can be, cannot be done because if the message is lost the resource is lost so the the resource has to stay in the logical box. So what we can send over the network is a duplicable certi certificate that the message has been sent, and because the certificate is duplicable we can send as many such certificates as we send messages until the very first message uh, of or copies of the message uh, arrives to the to the receiver in, in, and using this certificate uh, the receiver can open the box uh, and retrieve the, the resource. Now this um, enables retransmission of uh, of uh, and safe transfer of special resources. But it doesn't allow dependencies between resources that are stored in the logical context. And indeed, there might be several resources that uh, such resources that are in transit. So if we send, say, say message M2, M1 and M2, well, then can arrive, they can arrive out of order. And the boxes in which we store resources for both messages, they are completely unrelated. And well, this doesn't uh, fit to verify reliable communication library. Because precisely their messages are indexed uh, by some um, integer which enforces uh, the sequence ID, which inform enforces that the messages uh, are stored on the receiver side in the order they have been uh, sent. So on the other side, uh, if we look how the actress goes theory um, allows reliable dependent transfer. Um, uh, we can. What, what happens in actors go theory is that this transfer is modeled using some a pair of logical buffers, uh, v1, v2, which describes symmetrically for each direction um, the messages that are in transit and that are governed inside uh, another logical box inside iris invariant by some shared resource called the proto context that uh, precisely tracks what are the messages in transit. And here the idea is that the actress goes here comes with um, some logical rules that allow to create the the context the context with message no message no messages being yet in transit and some um, and two resources uh, that govern the the protocol for both sides. Here we don't see the uh, physical channel endpoints, but one can guess that it is those resources that will be used to define uh, precisely channel endpoints. And the idea is that when um, one wants to logically send a, a message using actors go theory, then one has to own uh, the proto own resource. Um, have the resource to be sent, which happens to be the on the head of the protocol, open the logical box, and then pre prepend to the to the end of the buffer v1 uh, the um, the message to be sent, and then uh, get back after an update the updated endpoint for itself, and um, similarly for receive. So this is only uh, shown for one side. Right. Um, so Actress Go's theory allows dependencies between resources stored in the shared logical context. But the problem is that, as such, it doesn't talk about um, 
certificates. So it doesn't use an escrow pattern. And this um, way of sending duplicable resources, which it is indeed need, what we need to connect after logical state with a special transfer uh, using duplicable witness, witnesses in an earth. And um, of course, also those duplicable witnesses, they must appropriately reflect the address logical state so that resources that can be acquired in accordance to their dependence. And uh, what it means is that on top of address go theory, we uh, built the following uh, theory, which we call session escrow pattern, which comes with the following rules. Those rules look, they have some similarity with actors go theory, but they present something novel. So instead of having the logical con, now the, our logical context and the resources for both sides, um, they are parameterized by two numbers. The um, left number uh, tracks how many messages has been sent uh, over this uh, channel endpoint, and the second number shows how many messages has been received. So that when we, oops, sorry. Um, so that uh, when we um, when we send um, let's say when we send a message uh, logically, we uh, go from number n to n plus one. And uh, another um, thing that we can observe in in those rules is that whenever uh, send happens, um, we obtain not we obtain not just updated. Um, uh, ownership of uh, of as own, but we also create a duplicable witness that we indeed have made this update uh, uh, called as IDX, and this uh, the rule um, session uh, escrow duplication precisely states that this witness can uh, is duplicable, and now this is resource that we can actually send along along messages. Uh, over the network, because this is will be duplicate, um, uh, du duplicable. Sorry. Um, I'm lacking a bit of time, so I will um, keep uh, this slide. But um, I will just say that the um, once we have once we define the session escrow pattern. We're able indeed to define this uh, channel end or channel endpoint ownership and verify the implementation of send and receive, which under the hood using uses this channel descriptor and uh, send and receive buffers. And so uh, the important points here are that the implementation of send and receive themselves they are network agnostic because they are communicate with network indirect, indirectly via this um, channel descriptor. And uh, th thanks to that, um, verification of send and receive for client and for server is exactly the same. Um, I will very quickly, um, mm -hmm. I will skip this because I'm out of time. I will just uh, say a couple of words about uh, the verified remote procedure call. So on top of uh, our library, we build um, the remote procedure call uh, library, which allows you further abstract away details of, of communication and build distributed application in a more high level. So um, and now we have a, we can uh, implement uh, application just by uh, making RPC request. So the idea is that if the user provides uh, the, um, if the user, I think, yes, sorry, I think, I think you should uh, conclude, please. Because, yes. yes, okay. Sorry, I was a bit slow. Um, I will just conclude then. So um, before this work, um, we um, we have just uh, an error program logic which models and reliable network communication and allows verification of distributed programs running or on top of UDP such as CRDTs. And what happens happened with this work is that our libel um, session library, it allows to abstract over low level rely unreliable network details. So that now we can build clients and applications uh, that necessitate reliable communication. And 
Furthermore, uh, we build as a library, as a middleware on top of this uh, reliable communication library, we build the remote procedure call library, which further abstracts uh, away even um, high level reliable network details. So that applications such as distributed key value stores or uh, um, transactional uh, databases, they can be built directly on top of RPC without even reasoning at all about network. And uh, this really provides us, now we can develop a uh, distributed application in a highly modular, modular way. Um, oh, sorry, I was a bit out of time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Um, so, please, please line up for oops, please line up for questions and uh, uh, say your name and affiliation and uh, eat the mic if uh, right. And while you are lining up for questions, I have a question online from Edwin Turek mm -hmm. uh, from um, um, yes. Uh, where is the question? Sorry, oops, I lost it. Sorry. Where is it? Um, I lost my question. Where is it? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Edwin Turek from Zen Server. Yes. Is uh, the RCLib, the RCLib uh, available somewhere online? And how does the key value store compare to uh, production implementations like uh, etcd uh, um, can you repeat the end just the end of the question and how it compares to etcd yes yes um yes uh it is uh available online on uh, and there is a github repo uh and also in the artifact uh, provided for this uh uh, for this project, and um, um, it's difficult to. I think the comparison is to, uh, the actual comparison is to be done, but um, this the implementation of reliable communication and the libraries built on top of it. Uh, they feature. They do feature realistic. Uh, they have fe several realistic features of um, existing. Uh, industrial products, but I don't think that they are really competitive with it yet, in any sense. So it's more of a proof of a concept in that sense. Thank you. Any further questions? Let me see. Are there any further questions online? Uh, I have I have one question. If you go back to the slide where you where you specify um, uh, just after the um, uh, how do um, I mean. Um, uh, no, uh, uh, after point three. Sorry, after the slide after point three, please. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Oh no, sorry, it's not. It's not that one. It's uh, next one. Uh, where you specify that uh, uh, you need to provide the, the serializers for the uh, client and the server. Sorry. Uh, I think it's this. Yes, there. Yes. So when you say that you provide the serializers for the uh, client and the server, do you need also need to provide the par the parsers and um, um, prove somehow prove that they are correct with respect to the serializer? Um, no, you don't need to provide this at this moment. Um, what you need to do is when you send a message, you have an additional set condition that um, the values that you send is indeed serializable with respect to serializer or that you. Uh, th that you gave. And then so this is a side condition here in ah. in the rule rule percent. And then where does it appear on the on the receiving side? On the it does not appear in the receiving side because um, uh, because uh, the um, because sorry because uh, the the uh, serialization has been passed. Uh, already at the moment when you one created a client and server socket. So um, one, just by by the fact that the library has been proved, uh, get for free that the received message is correctly deserialized. Okay. Uh, no further questions. Uh, let me see either online or here. So uh, thank you, the speaker again. Thank you, Leon. Yes.
thank you.